Hello there, Lumi Nation, and welcome back to another video. Here we are at the feet of the Tomb Scorpion, an order submission of mine. In fact, this was the second ever submission that I made here on the Shadow Kingdom Creative Build Discovery server. And to be honest, I am no longer content with how it looks. It is outdated, and I have progressed as a builder beyond whatever this is. If you have more than 10 minutes of playtime on the creative server, you would have probably heard me say at some point that this is my least favorite submission. Coincidentally, it has also been roughly a year since I uploaded this submission, so I think that it is high time that I rebuild the Tomb Scorpion with the level of skill that I currently have to see how much I have improved within the span of a year. So, what is the plan for rebuilding this plot? Well, there are a lot of areas in which I want to improve compared to the current rendition. Let's start with the terrain. The brick floor is meant to be a temple or ruins of some sorts. But the pattern is very simple and there is no three-dimensionality to it whatsoever. It is a flat plane. The detailing that I uh, added also feels either too simple or redundant. Most notably the scarab beetles are hard to recognize and even harder to appreciate. <laughs> I want to make the terrain more detailed and to have a difference in height to it, so the scorpion can crawl over a pile of crumbled ruins. Secondly, the scorpion itself. This was the second organic I have made, and it does show. The pose is incredibly static, and is simply one half of the scorpion mirrored to the other side. I want the body of the new scorpion to be fully angled on every axis, and to have asymmetrical arms and legs in order to fully sell the idea that this is a living being in motion. Also, the original tomb scorpion was highly inspired by ancient Egyptian symbolism. But this can be hard to recognize if you do not know what to look for. So, in the new version, I want to really drive home the ancient Egyptian vibe, with some hieroglyphs hammered into the carapace of the scorpion, and a much more recognizable mummy lodged in the slot of its back. Finally, there are no lights incorporated in the build whatsoever, and as you might already know, I have recently grown a fetish for builds to be shown at night time, so I'll be prioritizing incorporating lighting as well. So there you have it, that is the game plan. Let's get into the time lapse. Hello and welcome to the new and improved way in which I fill my time lapses. No longer do you have to put up with an awkward first person view that is sped up 14,000%, making it unable to see anything at all. This is the replay mod, which allows you to make cinematic time lapses, like the one you are currently watching. Now, even though it is a mod, it should probably be completely fine to use on the server. At least I hope it is, and that Shim doesn't decide to come back and break my kneecaps over this video. Anyways, the scorpion. What you are seeing right now is roughly 15 hours of building condensed to a 7 minute time lapse. The actual building time was longer, I estimate it to be around 22 hours. I built very slowly and I simply can't let the time lapse recording run for hours on end. So I did do some rotating of body parts and detailing that you will not see during the time lapse itself, however, in the end, I will do a final review of the new build so all the detail will be shown. Now. As you can see, I am building all the different sections of the scorpion with different colors of wool. This is so I can keep all the segments clearly separated from each other before I give them their eventual final colors. Such blocks are called placeholders. I've made it a habit to basically build everything out of wool first before I give the object its final coloration, completely separating the shaping part of the building with the coloring of the build. This allows me to both focus on the shape and the coloring with 100% of my very tiny brain at a time, giving better overall results in the end.
Here I am starting to build the crocodile skulls that are the detailing on the bottom part of the pincers. Now, as you know, building at an angle with full blocks is more difficult than building snapped to the grid of Minecraft. However, if you truly hate yourself, you can add one more layer of complexity, and that is to use slabs, stairs, and other non-full blocks at an angle as well. I was motivated to do this after I saw JST's contest plot during the Under the Sea building contest of last month. On his plot, he had made a crap at an angle of around 30 degrees, which was made almost fully out of slabs and stair blocks. I thought this looked hella on fleek, and I wanted to try that as well. In the final build, you will notice that the claws, as well as the singer, are made largely out of slabs and stairs, but still stick to an angle. This is where I start building the terrain using the same wall placeholder blocks that I explained earlier. In the intro I mentioned wanting the terrain to be more three-dimensional. I do so by eventually creating a pile of rubble and ruins for the scorpion to climb over, as if he just busted through a wall into a long-forgotten section of the ancient Egyptian crypts. A tip that I want to give people who are building organics is to adapt the organic to the environment, and not the other way around. This is the reason why I have skipped out on leg day until the end of the build. Only once the terrain is fully formed can I position the legs in such a way that the scorpion naturally looks stationed on top of the floor. This way the entire build looks more unified and coherent. If you are building on organic, please do not skip out on making the terrain just as interesting. It is a shame to see beautiful organics that are placed in uninteresting terrains that they do not interact with. Hey, and I hope you enjoyed that time lapse that I made. And um, if you didn't, uh, rude. Anyways, here she is, the new remastered Tomb Scorpion. Now let's have a look at the new angled shapes, new color palette, and the new Egyptian hieroglyphs and other decorations that I incorporated into the design. I decided to uh, pretty drastically change the colors that I used compared to the original, aside from the black. I found that I no longer really like those bright colors, so I went for a much more muted palette this time around. Um, that goes for the terrain too, actually. I did use some bold color options in some sections of both the organic and the terrain, most notably on the edges of the carapace sections, as well as on the top edges of the bricks and rubble. This is a technique that I learned from miniature painting, actually, and it's called edge highlighting. Now, what painters do is use a bright highlight color and very gently streak their brush along the edge of a sharp plane, such as a piece of armor or an insect carapace or a sharp rock. And this emulates how light naturally would highlight sharp raised areas. Anyways, I tried doing so in Minecraft as well, just to test it out, and I am very satisfied with the results. 
and this is a technique that I want to develop further with organics in the future. Now, I could not contain myself like a rational adult, and I had to put lights all over the organic. So, let's see how it turned out at night, shall we not? <laughs> Hell yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> it's a little extra work, but I do recommend everyone think about how their build looks at night. Enter at lights in the most key spots to serve as highlights. It doesn't take as much time as you might think, but it definitely adds a whole nother layer of complexity to your builds. And there you have it, the Tomb Scorpion 2.0. The original submission has now been replaced, so if you visit the build, you will be met by a submission that I am actually proud of. Um, regardless, I hope that you enjoyed the video. I finally feel happy enough with the quality of the video to chill out and ask for a like if you did enjoy, woo woo. Um, subscribe too, I guess, if you're into stalking me. That said, I bid you a pleasant rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.